What do you think the world humanities challenge will be over the next decade as we enter 2020? Different paradigms beginning to collapse. You know, economically, politically, socially, environmentally, religiously, yes. education, journalism, the uh, you know, medicine. Um, they they have to uh, move into chaos, mm. and chaos is just unpredictable. Because they're not order. working. Yeah, exactly. But now here's the challenge for humanity: you have one of two ways to embrace the breakdown of those 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 paradigms. You can face them with anger and hostility and fear, and you are only contributing to more of it. Uh, we have to see that those breakdowns are essential for something greater to happen. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Mindset Evolution YouTube channel, where you'll find the best videos to start creating wealth, abundance, and freedom. Just sit back, stay present, and evolve. We are excited to share with you the top five rules on how to create success in your life. Spoken by the New York Times best-selling author, meditation master, world-renowned researcher of epigenetics, quantum physics and neuroscience, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Rule number one, break through your subconscious beliefs. What are the things that disturb or disconnect our awakening and connection to the divine? A lot of times when people, uh, they hit that point, they try to reproduce it the same way as we mm. talked about, and you mm. can't. Yeah, you can't do it the same way because that's redundancy. But also, many times, uh, we have the experience and we start to try. Mm. And because trying is matter, trying to change matter. And, and, and so we're forcing, we're controlling, we're predicting. And, and, then the, uh, and when we do that, then, of course, we're in separation. And we're waiting for the event to happen to feel the emotion, right? And I've done that <laughs> long enough. And it's actually, you have to lay down the very thing we used our whole life to get what we want for something greater to occur and it takes practice of surrender, right? Mm. So that's one element. I also think that our responses emotionally, like uh, 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 let's just say that a person gets connected to the future. They get connected to the energy of their future. They feel it. It's really great. And then they start their day and then two hours later they're, they're feeling something else because some person or some circumstance altered their state. Well, they just disconnected from the energy of the future and now they're back to the energy of the past. Don't expect anything to change in your life because yeah. it doesn't work that way. So then, then when they get back to that old self again, then they say, what's wrong with me? I failed. They didn't do it right. No, that's all the program. You show up again and you go after it again. Uh, so familiar feelings uh, cause us to no longer see through the lens of the future. We're seeing through the lens, lens of, of the, the past, past. And, mm -hmm. and, and we color reality that way. So um, I, think, uh, I think familiar emotions uh, get in the way as well. And then, of course, there's always belief. Mm -hmm. And a belief is just a thought you keep thinking over and over again until you hardwired in your brain. And all beliefs are based on past experience. So a person has an experience, the stronger the emotion they have from that circumstance, the more they pay attention to the cause and the brain freezes a frame, takes a snapshot, and that's called the memory. Mm -hmm. The moment they draw a conclusion about that experience, they'll think neurologically within those circuits and they'll feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotion. Thinking and feeling, thinking and feeling, belief becomes an unconscious or subconscious state of being. They don't, most people don't even know they have beliefs about things, about God, about relationships, about money, because it's, it's not a conscious thing, it's a subconscious thing. Yeah. So in order to change a belief or a perception about yourself and your life, you got to go all in. Mm -hmm. It's not like you go 50% in. You got to go all in. You got to make a decision with such firm intention that the amplitude of that decision carries a level of energy that causes the body to respond to the mind. That the choice that you make becomes a moment in time you'll never forget. And you would say, I remember the moment I made up my mind to change. And the stronger the emotion you feel, the more you'll pay attention to the decision. And that's a huge stone you drop in the quantum field. Big splash, big waves. Rule number two, create new synaptic connections. Your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of all the things you've learned and experienced to this moment. So if you wake up every morning and get out of bed on the same side, 
shut the alarm clock off with the same finger, shuffle into the bathroom and use the toilet like you always do, go and get a cup of coffee and drink coffee out of your favorite mug, then get in the shower and wash yourself off in the same routine way, drive to work, get to work, see the same people that push the same emotional buttons, do the same things that you've memorized and do so well, then hurry up and go home, and hurry up and check your emails, and hurry up and check your Facebook, and then watch your favorite television show, then hurry up and go to bed. Here's my question. Did your brain change at all that day? We could say that you were thinking the same thoughts performing the same unconscious actions, living by the same emotions, but secretly expecting your life to change. So there's a principle in neuroscience. And the principle says, nerve cells that fire together, wire together. So if you're thinking the same thoughts, making the same choices, demonstrating the same behaviors, reproducing the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns, and then produce the same emotions, you're going to hardwire your brain into a very finite signature. Because as you fire and wire the same circuits in the same way, those circuits begin to become more connected. And by the time you're 35 years old, this is science now, we become a set of memorized behaviors, unconscious habits, automatic emotional reactions, beliefs and perceptions, and even attitudes that function just like a computer program. And if you do something over and over and over again, the repetition of those actions over time conditions your body to know how to do it well better than your mind. And a habit is when your body knows better than your mind, where you've done something so many times that the body now knows how to do it better than the brain. And so 95% of most people's behaviors, attitudes, thoughts, beliefs, emotional reactions are subconscious programs. So why is that important? Because you're here this week to learn new information. And every time you learn something new, you make new connections in your brain. That's what learning is. Learning is forging new synaptic connections. Physical evidence as a result of your interaction in the environment and the footprints of consciousness is called learning, making new connections. And the Nobel Prize laureate Kandel in the year 2000 found that when people learned one bit of information, they doubled the number of connections in their brain from 1,300 connections to 2,600 connections. But if they didn't review that information, if they couldn't repeat it, if they couldn't remember it, those circuits pruned apart in hours or days. So if learning is making new synaptic connections, then remembering is maintaining and sustaining those connections. Rule number three, focus your energy on your goals. You're alive in this world and you haven't been experiencing the quickening. I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, I said to uh, someone the other day, the day where you end your day and feel complete because you finished all your work, you'll never have that. And, yeah. you know, there's always more emails and more things to check, <laughs> right? So the demand has, has, has pressed us into this crazy realm mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of, of um, multitasking. And I think that you start shifting, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So if you're shifting your attention all over the board, your energy is scattered. Yeah. So then when you start disconnecting from everybody, your boss, your coworker, you know, the news, uh, your cell phone, your computer, and you start going this way, I think it's 
uh, into the present moment, then if where you place your attention is where you place your energy and you're truly in the present moment, you got a lot of energy to execute. You got a lot of energy to use and you want to be able to do that eyes open. The more well. scattered your energy, the less you have to focus on pushing one thing forward. That's why people's dreams don't happen because too scattered. It, it, there's no look. Look, if you keep putting your attention on some future experience that you are imagining with your mind, your body's going to follow your mind right there because that's where your energy is. But if you're putting your attention on everything known in your life, the shower, the coffee maker, you know, right. the, the toilet, and your body's following your mind every day to the known. But we want your body to follow your mind to the unknown, right? Yeah. Enough people get to doing that and you could do better in creating things in your life that we see this wealthy people in our work that have focused on wealth some of them living in the back seat of their car some of them bankrupt that now have multi-million dollar companies what do you think they want to do with that money they want to give it away yeah, give back let me tell you why not because of any other reason is that they now know that they create more Right. Well, why, why, if you're abundant, why abundance to me has changed. Abundance means I have more than I need, like way more than I need. So if I have way more than I need and I know how to create it, then take it. I'll create more of it. So now you're no longer holding on in scarcity. You're making a difference. So wealthy people that have created a lot of wealth in this work, they want to give back. They want to make a difference. And I think that that's how we're innately wired. Mm -hmm. I think we're all innately wired to care for one another, yeah, to make a difference. In the living organism, our living organism, our community, we heal one another, that's what we do. Right. We inform one another, we encourage one another, we support one another, we shine for one another, not to outshine another person, to shine to show them that they can shine, and that's, that to me is super healthy. Mm -hmm. So then I'm, I'm applauding your success because I want you to succeed because you're telling me that if you can do it, I can do it. Right. So, so there's no longer any separation. I think that's hopeful for the world. Then you start celebrating diversity. Then you're like, wow, you're way different than me. I wanna, I wanna study you because I wanna bring that into who I'm becoming. Mm. Yeah, you, you, you create a strong community that way. Rule number four, increase your energy field by opening your heart. Your body rejects viruses all really? the time. Of course. It has memorized certain viruses that you've been exposed to. It has memorized certain bacteria that you've been exposed to. And it's beaten those viruses. It's not every virus wins in the body. The body has an intelligence and, it's, and it has quite a library of huh. memories in the, in, the, in the white blood cells. So your body is fighting viruses and bacteria all the time. There's a constant competition going on. Really? So our research shows that four days of opening your heart releases immunoglobulin A, your body's primary defense against bacteria and viruses. It's better than the flu shot. It's the body's natural flu shot. And that's the innate intelligence of the body saying, I got this, I got a lot of energy. In fact, I got a surplus of energy. In fact, I'm radiating energy and now that's nothing too much in my energy. outer world. It, well, now my outer world is not controlling my inner world. My inner world now is functioning independent of what's going on in my outer world and now, like you're manifesting. Outside. You're yeah, manifesting. Now, ah, now you got it. Now you're yeah. in a creative state. People this are is coming to you, yes. Right, exactly. Now you're a magnet. Now you have a field, right? And you have energy uh, to heal. And our research shows that that field around your body will actually expand. You you radiate more light and information. Cells are getting new information that are, that are causing uh, um, light to be exchanged between cells and information. Now the body's getting an upgrade. So. So that immunoglobulin wow. A in four days went up 50%. So now we now know that if it's going up 50%, that then the immune system was getting a new signal. And nitric oxide then causes another chemical to activate the arteries in your heart to swell. And now, just like when energy moves into your sexual organs and it swells with blood and you have energy there, the same intensity, it moves into your heart. And now, now the heart is activated. And what do you feel? you feel an incredible amount Bulletproof. of love. Yeah, and love. you, feel, you yeah. feel you feel whole. And now mm. the more whole you feel, our research shows, then the less separate you feel from the things you want in your life because you feel like you already have them. You only want things when you're in lack, but when you feel whole, then it feels like it's already happened. And that mm. tends to be the exact emotion 
that causes those synchronicities and serendipities and coincidences to happen in our life. And you say to a person, what are you doing? And they're saying, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> just so loving happy. life. I'm being yeah. myself. I'm, yeah, right. exactly. I'm free. I'm free from the past. I'm free yeah. from my, my story of the past. I'm, in fact, I'm more connected to the energy of my future than I am to the energy of my past. Rule number five, embrace the shift of ages. What do you think the world humanity's challenge will be over the next decade as we enter 2020? Different paradigms beginning to collapse, you know, economically, politically, socially, environmentally, religiously, yes. education, journalism, the, uh, you know, medicine. Um, they, they have to uh, move into chaos. Mm. And chaos is just unpredictable. Because they're not working. Yeah, exactly. But now here's the challenge for humanity. You have one of two ways to embrace the breakdown of those, those, those paradigms. You can face them with anger and hostility and fear, and you are only contributing to more of it. Uh, we have to see that those breakdowns are essential for something greater to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> we can't wait for governments to take care of us. That's, we can't wait for uh, medicine to, to give us a drug that's gonna heal us mm. from a condition. The truth is, with a greater level of consciousness, the change in awareness because of information, the greatest challenge we have as those, as those paradigms break down is to no longer emotionally react in the same way and be victims. You can't say, this president, this person, this, this whatever, is actually making me feel this way and think this way. Basically, you're in the program that you're, something outside of you is controlling you, yeah. how you feel and how you think. So then to self-regulate then is to say, how I think and feel is going to change my outer environment. So then mm. we're all faced with great opportunities brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. And we are at that point, at that nexus point in our, our evolution as a species. So then you don't try to fix that that's never going to work. What you do is you create something better. Mm -hmm. And then everybody just naturally just leaves that and goes here. Now, it used to be some people would just come here and the majority would stay here because they're clinging to w what they've been programmed or believe in. But now, because of information, everybody's like, that's not going to work. I already know it's not going to work and I don't care what anybody says. This is working for me. So. People are moving to new, to, new, um, uh, to new applications, to new paradigms, because it's working for them. So as long as we don't emotionally react to the breakdown that's happening currently in the world, and chaos is just unpredictable order, you know, as, as, as things move towards disorder, the novelty that's being created is literally chaos. Mm -hmm. Because the known and everything staying the same is order. But as you step out into that unknown, it's the, you're having the chaos is unpredictable order being expressed through novelty. And we have to be able to learn how to take that disorder and with the application of brain and heart coherence, create more order. So you can't just say, hey, I'm standing up for peace and, you know, and being, being miserable with your coworker. You, 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 you don't get to talk about peace. And so there's you. You're the you're the living prayer of peace. Not just we know we know crime rates go down and violence goes down when there's peace projects in communities where there's meditation on peace. But when those peace gathering projects end, you know you see that crime and violence and everything returns back to the same level. So it's not enough to just think it. Mm. We got to demonstrate it. So if I'm demonstrating peace and you're demonstrating peace, somebody else, because of mere neurons, is gonna go, wow, that person's unpredictable. Wow, they're different. It's given me permission to do the same. So I think that ultimately moving into that state of being, you know, as, as human beings, and, and, and creating unity, mm. that, you know, you keep watching so many programs on television that talk you into prejudice, that talk you into separation, that talk you into fear, that talk you into violence, that talk you into war, deceit, uh, negativity, um, you're, you're not going to trust anybody. In fact, you're going to see difference between you and me or anybody because that's what separation does. But yeah. when you're heart-centered and you feel connected, you don't see the person any longer, mm. right? You see something transcendent, you see an essence, right? Yeah. And I think 
if you do that really well, that kind of emergence of a, of a new consciousness uh, that's less dependent on, on all of those outer things is really difficult yeah. to control. And if you want to control a community, control their emotions mm -hmm. and control them in survival. Right. When you overcome your emotions, you can see the hidden meaning behind all things. And when everybody's looking this way, you may be looking that way because you understand, look, you've just overcome your fear. Yeah. You've just overcome your yeah. hostility and anger. You've overcome the program of whatever it is. I swear to you, you, you are going to be able to connect people and that that then is the hope of the future. Let me know if the video inspired you to create the life you deserve. Comment down below. Please subscribe, hit the bell and like the video so you don't miss the weekly uploads. Check out the other videos that will help you to evolve your mindset and achieve your own freedom. Thanks for watching.